Yo, Jeff, what's up? Welcome back. What's going on? Hey, man. It's good to be back. Thank you, man. <laughs> Looking good. Uh, How's it going? Tell us how hot it is out there today in Phoenix. Um, right now it says it's 99, and last time I checked the humidity, it was 57%, so it's stupid. Wow. It's insane. Well, it looks like it's you're wearing some husband. swag that somebody sent you. Yeah, I, yeah, I got you. I got a got a new shirt here and a hat. Looking I, I good. I've heard these guys. They're really cool. Looking good, man. Um, really good. They had an album drop a couple weeks ago. Free oh clean. yeah, well thank you. Yeah, a week and a half in. It's <laughs> fun. Hey, if you do apparel with that album cover for the new album you've got coming out, uh, Shites of Katzen. How do you say it? Shiza Katzen. Thank yeah. you. Shiza Katzen. That album cover would make a really cool shirt. I'd be a player on that, okay. pal. Just make like 15 of All them. Right. We'll, you know, we can get rid of 15 easy. Maybe. <laughs> uh, and then there's I don't a cool even have 15 followers. Here. 15 or 20 shirts. Send them my way. I'll get rid of them for you, dude. To all the boys out here. You know? Send some to Zach. He'll get, he'll get rid of some. Lomax. Oh, yeah. It's a cool piece yeah, of art. Yeah, yeah. I would wear, I'd rock that on a shirt yes. all day long. Um, guess what I just heard through the grapevine? Somebody is in the Would queue you? for a review uh, for Spring Tank. Oh, really? Let's, uh, let's give a shout out to music.intrenddiary.com. They are going to review, and I just have insider information. Thanks. So let's watch for that to drop and read your review. Hopefully it's good. That's, that's a nice surprise. <laughs> Fingers You're crossed, huh? Me, dude. Let's get it. Let's hopefully yeah, it'll be fun. I'm sure it'll, get, I'm oh, sure yeah. it'll be a good review because it's an amazing album, and we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna get into that right now. Actually, just wanted to mm -hmm. let you know that it's in the queue. So, hopefully, it drops maybe in a week or two. That that review. Oh, that, that that's kind of cool, man. <laughs> Thank you. And, Thanks for uh, you. Tell us. Me uh, we're pretty close to that album drop, and tell us. Give it one more plug right now. The new one coming mm -hmm. up, um, Shiza Katzen. I know we all learned the word Shiza in junior high, um, in German class or, or whatever. You know, Katzen is cats. It basically translates as effing cats. You know? <laughs> um, I, mean, I, I don't cool. know. Yeah, some people might know. Um, kind of my logic behind that a few cats showed up in my backyard a couple years ago we ended up adopting them um <laughs> it's kind of a whirlwind but uh so my joke is i always tell them you know i hope you guys make me a million dollars or something somehow it's got to pay off all you do is eat food and, and clean your crap and so um but it, this is therapy for those effing cats okay and cool uh, all the songs are about cats. They're all they're all pretty aggressive, like Rammstein type vibe. Um, Which I'm down with that, for sure. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's goofy, but it's uh yeah, July twenty fourth, two thousand twenty four, Pioneer Day for the people up in Utah. <laughs> Listen to it on Pioneer Day with your grandparents. There you go. <laughs> And uh, I think maybe after a week or two of that album dropping, we should probably review that one as well. And I have no idea. I haven't checked out the demos cool. for it yet, so I'm pretty much in the dark on it. So I'm going to just kind of wait till it drops, and then I'm going to study it and okay. listen through it a few times. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. I'm excited, absolutely. actually, because I like that industrial twist on stuff, as you know. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that in, um, in a project that you're working on. Uh-huh. Called Apophis. Yep. Anyway, and, okay. or, um, yeah. So you're down with that sound too, and I was excited to hear that you kind of understood mm -hmm. where that was going. So that was exciting for me. Yeah. Uh, you, when you sent a you sent a message to me, it said, "Here's a couple of my influences on this." Mm -hmm. You sent a couple of Gary Newman albums, and I'm like, "You're speaking <laughs> my language, man." It's it's a uh, yeah. You know, I have this shrine with like two. The, the picture I sent you, it's two autographed posters um, and the playlist from the bassist when he okay. was in Phoenix. And uh, 
met him a couple times, did a remix for a contest that he was having. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's a massive influence on everything I do. Amazing. You can probably hear a lot of stuff ripped off from him in my stuff. Um, Influences, sure, but, but yeah, I know. I, I, dude, yeah, I totally love it, too. I love Gary Newman. I love all his stuff. You know, he basically mm -hmm. invented what we now know as electronic industrial. Yep. He inv you know, he basically created yep. that. And as we talked about, he influenced... Uh, we go. And I'll have to show you my yeah. record collection sometime. I have all the Two Boy Army stuff, and then I have all the Gary Newman stuff, most of it, on vinyl. And those are really fun records to listen to. Yeah. Yeah, my friend uh, Margaret Barrows, she, she married she Zach gave... Barrows. You know what? Let me snag it real quick. It's right here. I remember Zach Barrows. Yeah, he's he's such a cool guy. What is he such play? a cool guy? Well, what does he go? Pulled, and she brought the autographed copy of Intruder. It's the, uh, the oh, red vinyl, I think. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Yep, there we go. Red vinyl. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, uh, well, I don't have that one, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'd like to. <laughs> hey, tell me what instrument Zach plays again because it froze and you came back. Tell us again. Zach Burroughs? I don't know for sure. Um, yeah. I, I want to say that I heard in passing that he might play some guitar, but I okay. don't know for sure. Okay. Awesome, dude. So uh, we are reviewing today Spring Tank. Dispersal. Yeah. And it's, uh, while you're getting ready, I've got out. the list up here, and I, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to try to play 30 seconds of each song. I can hear it. You okay. can't, but you know the song is inside and out, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it. As an opener, uh, did you static mix this? Do you use plugins, and you're on GarageBand, correct? Um, plugins, I, I don't lean heavy on plugins. Um, the, uh, the acoustic that comes in, I just went straight through, um, and just kind of, I just kind of, just kind of mix as I go along. Well, it's a really nicely mixed album. Uh, your guitar tones are fantastic. In fact, let's get into it. Here's Hollow, 30 seconds. Got two, three. Christened once. Betrayed twice, words alone will not suffice. They're so hollow, so hollow, so hollow. Used my heart, ignored my brains, the dreams I had. All right, so that acoustic, I heard that in acoustic or a clean guitar, and then uh, and the drums and the rhythm guitar parts come in, and the rhythm guitar part has a really cool guitar tone. I noticed that right off the bat. And I like cool. the vocal Thanks, melody, man. man. That's a really cool, you have a really knack, a knack for melody, if I may say. Thank you. That, that one, um, I want to say that one was kind of inspired by, um, was it... Uh, I want to say it was Death Cab for Cutie, the, okay. the way that his vocal inflections go, kind of at the, at the beginning. Sure. Um, Production-wise, I mean, you might might want to know a little about that. Of course, there's the acoustic guitar. Um, I tuned it to Dadgad, the D-A-D-G-A-D. -A -D. It's a kind of a Celtic tuning. Okay. Um, I just wanted to try to mix something up so it's easy to strum to. It's very easy to strum to. Um, the crunchy parts were done through the rat. I kind of got got the pedals out again as well. Um, cool. So I'll go through. I'll kind of go through the pitchfork and then it cycles through. It goes out um, overdrive into the fuzz board. I don't know if you can see that well yeah. or not. Yep. It's a cool. 
So it goes into the fuzz board. We'll go over this if, if needs be. Um, comes back into the uh, IR200, which is um, impulse responses. If you want to talk about oh, yeah. those, we can. I'm, like, huge into them. Yeah, that's cool, man. Well, my uh, viewers know that's about awesome. all that stuff. It's really cool stuff. And, oh, uh, nice, nice. Okay. Cool. IRs, baby. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this and this has a, cool a an effects loop which goes out through here, and then it pumps back out through a stereo chorus pedal. Um, I so I I just kind of left and right into uh, like through a Scarlet into uh -huh. my laptop. Remind me what guitar you use. Of course, the Scarlet and the laptop and GarageBand, correct? Yeah. And pretty yeah, much what you're doing would be considered uh, static mixing. So you're not really using a lot of plugins. So you're just basically okay. using uh, yeah, no, balances yeah. and panning and just really getting and gain staging just to get a really yeah. nice balanced mix. And it, it, it's working. It works for it. It totally works. Right. It's really good. Thanks, man. Yeah, I I used to try to use um, I used to just plug straight into the uh, the laptop without any effects and just record gu guitar dry. Uh -huh. um, and then just use use all the plugins for that for effects. But for some reason, I want it, it started off with me wanting a good spring reverb, and those are hard to get. Yeah. <laughs> with the with the plugin, so I ended up getting the Ocean's Eleven pedal, which has a really good spring reverb. It's got the drip, like like imagine um, the song in uh, Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's classic spring reverb. Uh -huh. um, and then I just kind of went down the pedal rabbit hole. <laughs> and I'm happy because it, it seems to pump up. Yeah, the, dude, uh, there, the that's a conversation. Mix, and I can't mix it away. No, so, dude, people get guitar I, I tones. I can't the source. mix it out. Yeah, you committed to a yeah. guitar tone sound with the spring reverb and everything. Right, that's, right. That's yeah. a conversation. I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's... What we talk about a lot, and it's do you build oh, it in the box or no? Do you build it at the source? You build it on the amp. You capture and commit what you want your guitar tone to sound like, and uh, you can do things in the box to like, exactly, you know, help it out and mix it good and, and high pass, low pass, and different EQs. But um, you know, maybe even add a little <laughs> compression, and, and it, we don't have to go down that rabbit hole right now. But I want to see if it's a reoccurring theme throughout the album because your guitar tones are killer. Let's go 30 seconds on played out. Here we go. Thanks. Okay. So I love that drum groove, that drum loop. It's totally got that cool late 80s, early 90s indie UK thing going on for me. Like the whole charlatans <laughs> thing that I mentioned, like it's so in that vein. I don't know if that's on purpose or tell me about that a little bit. Kind of, yeah. Um, it, I, a few months ago, I kind of wanted to just kind of try something new so i ended up getting a couple of those arturia machines like i got the micro freak synth and the drum brute um drum machine so i i didn't quite cut it as like an, an electronic improv guy so i used the drum boot the drum brute drum machine to make this loop okay um that kind of pops in in this song and that's very gary newman-ish um, like it's kind of yeah, a Gary Newman seems to use this drum loop a lot and it's a fun go-to because it's got a lot of swing to it it's got some depth to it if you kind of crush it a little bit like what I what I did in here um, it makes a nice layer without it being too bombastic um, I didn't really want a bombastic drum beat on this yeah, well, your aesthetic uh, that doesn't necessarily call for it. It's got, it's got just enough, I think, just enough grit. 
Oh, uh, real nice. And the vocal's really cool. The vocal's really good on this one. Ah, okay. Okay, Thanks, uh, here's, my, here's a good one. Counterfeit, 30 seconds. Cool. I heard you like this one. And so you went down the uh, electronic elements uh, path on this one, and the drum loop is cool. The ghost notes, you can hear them in there, and the synth arpeggiators, yeah. they all sound killer into a nice, cool vocal. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, drums were important for me on this one with those ghost notes. Um, this song originally, I tried to farm out a female vocalist because I got sick of my own voice. Um, because I can only do so much, so I I wanted a female to sing it. I reached out a couple times, but to a, a couple different girls I know, and they're like, mm, I don't know, maybe we'll see. But um, so I sent them this demo with me singing, and uh, it just never shook out. So I just used the demo with me singing. Um. This song was heavily influenced by Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Okay. Um, like, the end especially when the guitars come in. Just kind of getting my notes up here. And uh, with the soft singing, I think a lot of that influence was... Um, there's an artist who goes by the name of Water Baby. Like, not Waterburger, but... <laughs> but a water baby and uh -huh. very, um, very easy kind of trip hop type music. Um, the way that she sings in this is, is very quiet. And I really liked that approach because you kind of lean into the music, you listen to it. And, uh, there were some spots where she was talking. So, so she was barely letting any air out of her throat to move her vocal cords. And so you really lean in and listen to it, and then she says some really important stuff, and I'm like, oh, that that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so I tried to throw that into I, – I took that as a cue in this one with some of the, the quieter part before it kind of escalated into the louder stuff, so – Yeah, it's a good dynamic. The What I heard was um, Shirley Ann Manson – when you were describing yeah. it, I was like, oh, just call Shirley Ann Manson up, and she'll get the nice female that's... vocal you need on that. That's what okay. Butch did. Yeah, yeah do, I'll... Right? I'll... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll cool song. I think it works, the <laughs> subdueness, the starkness, the uh, dynamic. I think it works great. I, I, yeah, to your point earlier, that is my one of my favorite songs on the album. I really like it. came together nicely. All right, here's Thank okay, you, 30 seconds. So... Do I dare say Beatles influence? What's going on there, dude? It's like, it's cool, man. Great harmony, too. Thanks, man. It's, I can see that. I can see that. Something um, off uh, Revolver. This one I just kind of wanted to go traditional shoegaze on. Like, kind of set the vocals back a little bit, push the guitar forward a little bit. There's a lot of muff tracks in here. There's... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six muff tracks. One um, Katz and Koenig track. It's like a muff. It's kind of right in between a muff and a DS1. Um, plasma. Okay. <laughs> now there's a plasma coil fuzz pedal. Um, it was designed with Jack White 
with uh, with the Game Changer audio. Okay. Um, so there, there's a lot of fuzz in this one, and I just oh. kind of wanted it nice and rippy and stuff. So it's not over the top, dude. It's right on the money, man. I, I, and I think you, yeah. I think your vocal uh, balances are perfect through the whole album. Like it's Thanks. just. Yeah, right song, under the guitar, Pete Trans is like personal. right under. I, I like <laughs> yeah, that really type personal of uh, vocal. I like basically. right where you tuck your vocals right under the Pete Trans of the guitar. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it, really. It uh, yeah, I, yeah, Jesus and Mary Chain is like a template for me on that. Oh, that's um, the band that I couldn't think of that I knew was true. an influence. That's the one, Jesus and Mary Chain. <laughs> that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Had I thought of that, it Absolutely. Would, that totally makes sense. Yeah, it's awesome. And the fuzz is perfect too. It's not over. It's not over the top. That's what I was saying. I don't know if you caught that. The fuzz is perfect. It's just the right amount of fuzz and distortion. Thanks. Okay, meet us in Dresden, shall we? You want to meet in Dresden? Here we go. Thirty seconds. Let's go. Nice dynamic drop there after the intro, and uh, another killer song. This is another one of my favorites, actually. I like the driving bass. Remind me, which bass are you using on these? Yeah, it's a Rickenbacker 4003, <sighs> and it goes through... I just use this Ampeg preamp pedal, and then um, run through a bass cab IR. Okay. So it, it gives it a the nice um, woody um, kind of organic feel to it. With a tiny bit of distortion um, on the nose, I can hear it. Tiny bit of distortion. Little, little bit. Mm. Little bit of drive. Yep. Love it. Yeah, Love this it. this one, uh, it's kind of funny. I, I don't remember... I don't remember doing this song a lot because um, I was sick. You, if you listen to the vocals, you can kind of hear it's really nasally. So there was a lot of cold medicine involved. <laughs> so that's why this one's so different. It kind Sip of it sticks out in the mix. Juice, it's huh? got a really weird, like, slow pixies feel to it. Okay, yeah. Um, in the verses. Yeah, and it rocks so, right out of the gate. That, like, the intro, is, it gets, it's rocking. You know what I mean? It's rocking on you. Thanks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, it, it, it's I'll take a, it. a mid-up-tempo rocker a little bit, which I really like. A little bit more uh, Jesus and Mary Chain, maybe, huh? I, I'll take Maybe. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> cool, cool. Okay, Trust Fund. Is it, I'm going to assume it's the same guitar and the same fuzz. It's got a cool aesthetic. It's kind of the recurring theme, yeah. Yeah, I, I mostly used um, the Rat pedal, um, the Fuzz War pedal by Death by Audio. Um and the plasma coil pedal and the uh the op amp big muff too like i know i know you're familiar with that one so yeah yep cool okay trust fund kid Coming right out of the gate, it's rocking again. Okay, you got, it's yeah. rocking a little bit, which I like. You know? Yeah, this one's got the Jesus and Mary Chain vibe to it. Okay. With a a cool lot of bass tone and, again. Yeah, that was important to me on this one. Like, um, because that basically carries the whole. 
Yeah, it's it, it makes up for the driving fuzz that people might not like. Bass guitar. <laughs> it it kind of makes up for the fuzz that people might not like. The fuzz, yeah, yeah. The beginning. Uh -huh. um, well, everyone likes the fuzz, dude. Movie. I don't see how you couldn't like that aesthetic. Uh, <laughs> it's it works killer for this style genre, you know. It's Thanks. awesome. I, yeah, I wanted to kind of throw back to the, you know, the, like like the late eighties with. Again, Jesus and Mary Chain, Lush, you know, those bands like that, so. Yeah, super cool. Um, oh, I had a general question for the whole set. Uh, when was this written? Um, I, th I think probably, like, late... Yeah, the late November through... Um, Probably April or May of this year. Okay. So and over so, about six months. Okay, yeah. About the same time we were working on Freak Breed, but you uh, got to the finish line and you put it out and published it pretty quick. And then, yeah? Yeah, just just push it out. I kind of, you kind of hit that place where you realize you're finished. Yeah. Um, it's not a running out of gas thing, but it's it's kind of a... Okay, the, you know, all my emotions that I had at that time are done. They're right here in this body of work. Um, so bring on the next one, you know. There you go. I mean, it's a big deal t to just get past the finish line, in my opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. awesome work. Hats off, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> all right. Frozen one. Here's head case. comes out swinging again that's a different distortion though which pedal would you use on that one it's a little bit more aggressive sound it's cool it's a little more nasally that's that's um, a combination of the plasma coil and the fuzz war and the big uh, buff op want to hear the trick for removing nasal though just in case sure it's easy carve out seven to nine hundred cycles like Hurts. So dip it in, dip it out yep a real kind of okay. a narrow cue and find where the nasal is and dip it out and you can literally remove nasal somewhere between seven and nine hundred is it because of the <laughs> mid range that you like is that yeah, yeah the mid it's, this one's kind of mid humped okay um, okay well the guitar scoop if you want to know in that area would be between five hundred and seven hundred so similar range but five and seven hundred five to seven that's really good mid-range uh sounding guitar though i don't think you know i think it sounds good it's okay. serving its purpose just fine yeah it, it does the job <laughs> does the job yeah um it's funny some amps are naturally already scooped like a mesa boogie and then uh, if you blend it with an or if you blend mm. it with a marshall or uh, something else to fill in that mid. That's how you can get a really nice tone. That's what Brad and I are going to actually do on these ATF demos. But nice work, man. Yeah, we're just talking engineering a little bit. But the great guitar tones throughout, I think. Thanks. Yeah, the, the, uh, the IR200 pedal with the impulse responses is really good for choosing whatever, whatever amps or cabs. I lean toward the the Vox cabs, like the AC30, a lot um, with the Creamback or the Ruby Celestians, and um, yeah, the the Twins good too. The Reverb Twins a good IR on oh, that. Oh yeah, too. okay, yeah. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of 
it's got a lot of oomph to it. It's got a lot of poke to it without mm-hmm. it being really metal. Yeah. Per se, but. Yeah, in the 1 to 2K range, that, that, that mid-high stuff on those are really nice about being brittle, you know? 1 to 2K, 1.6, 1.6K, you know? It's, bump. it's dropping out a little bit again. All right. Well, I, it got me, but I was just talking about the 1.6K bump that they kind of have. It's actually nice in a mix, you know? Okay, okay. Yeah. If you ever have too flat of a guitar... It's scoop out five to seven hundred and bump one point six, and then you get like gnarly and then scoop gnarly. <laughs> All right, cool. cool, cool. So here is I hope it hurts, and then we'll talk about that and then whatever else and go over the whole thing uh, in general again. Okay, here you go. My pounding heart, it shakes me in the middle of the night. Violently, it wakes me. I'm sweating from the fright. Breathing hard, I've run this race a thousand times before. But I can't seem to outpace these memories anymore. Don't touch me. Just stay away. Really nice guitar tone once again when that comes in, and then you did a different aesthetic on your vocal there. Tell me what uh, influenced this awesome guitar tone, Tell, and then a different aesthetic on the vocal. What? Where'd you get this idea from? Um, this, actually, I woke up at like 3 in the morning from, from a dream. I know all musicians do this. Um, wrote down everything in the dream and uh, kind of a reoccurring type of thing. So that kind of pushed the the first part of the verse, the kind of mm, flat part. Um, I kind of wanted to emphasize the don't touch me part and uh, just kind of pushed it. And um, the I hope it hurts you, I hope it hurts you too thing, just, like, I, long story short, I had to cut somebody out, <laughs> cut someone out of my life, and it, it sucks how things were left, but um, sometimes it's a good thing, because if you're a good person, you know, they, they don't deserve that kind of thing. They don't deserve who you are as a person if you're good, if they don't return the good back to you. Yeah. So, you know, I, I hope that, you know, this song is basically my hopes that they can internalize that and and move on for themselves and and uh, get in a better get in a better place for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you get older and you have lots of responsibilities, you can't take yeah. on everyone's BS anymore. You have to navigate that with a little bit more carefulness if that's a word but yeah dude i i feel you and that a yeah. lot of songs come out of life experiences like that yeah and there's just no time to put up with anybody's bs being yeah. this old too we barely have <laughs> you know, everything's time every little minute as it is how's it this place and it comes out of the gate rocking too and uh yeah and then the chorus hits and then boom you got the you go big on the chorus. I like the dynamic again, you know? Thanks, man. Pretty, uh... Yeah, the end of the end of this song. 101, uh... Intro, verse, chorus, verse, even a bridge and an outro. You have a good head for melody and arrangement. Okay. Thanks, man. You know? You yeah, know the that. end of this one... The end, of, the end on this one, um... You know how when you're singing something really really close to your heart and then you just kind of start feeling the tears coming in front of the mic <laughs> so i'm like ah push stop you know requeue it go back do it again you know a little little bit coming through again had to push stop but at the end i was like you know what f it i'm just gonna like bust through it so i'm like as i'm singing this as you can hear it i'm 
literally tears are coming down my face. Wow. And wow. Uh, it was really cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> it was hard, but um, sometimes, you know, the, the only way to the other side is through. Yeah. And I had to break through it. So. The first time I listened to this, uh, the emotional substance came through. And I even, I even mentioned that to you. I said, good job letting that even come through and not holding back because uh, it makes for good, connectable uh, music, you know, for people when the emotional content comes through. So. Good job on that. Good job on being able to cry, you know? Good job, you know? I, I haven't been able to cry since I was 15, so. <laughs> uh, well, it was it was the time and place. So, you know, and just setting that aside, and it, it's a lot cheaper than, you know, spending money on a therapist. So, hey, and it's, they it's don't call man, it so. emo for nothing, right? <laughs> yeah, good you know time. I mean, just uh, not it's full emo music, point. but uh, influences thereof. You know what I mean? Did you ever listen to those yes. records, the Far uh, record out, the yeah. Far album, and Sunny Day Real Estate? Those are great albums. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, Far had a lot of the. Uh, it, it was like it was it was kind of punky. It yeah, had that punky poke to it. Yep. And uh, Sunny Day was like right in between. Um, I want to say it's like right in between the first and second waves of like the grungy stuff. It's, it fits really right in the middle of that. Correct. Yep. So here's <clears throat> the one you listened to. Okay. Diary. Okay. And then now you need to study the second album, the pink album. Okay. Gotcha. It has elements of that Northern California punk metal rock, if you will, but it's got some even some progressive elements. They get really technical songwriting on this album. It's really cool, dude. You have to digest this one now, okay? This is a good album, bro. While you're looking for it, got that. I think it's right here. Nope. Sharp and new man. Okay, so. First album reissue. Dude, we are me. Yep. Yep, that is a good Here's one. That's a key Savage. One. This is my favorite newer era uh, Gary Newman album. Okay. Love this album, dude. I noticed throughout your album also, you like to load the back half of the bar with the vocal. That's something Gary Newman does pretty consistently. It's very tasty. Instead of loading the front of the bar, you know, you you, yeah. you pause and hope, fill the back. It's really cool songwriting. And then the, the melodies, too. Uh, constant throughout your album, all the melodies, uh, you just you nail them. Do, do, they, do those come to you easily, or do you have to write and, and develop them? Um, funny story about that. Um... I know that you'll understand because you're because you're a writer. That's my favorite album, um, by the way. That's my favorite two way album right there. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, with Down in the Park. It's it's a good one. It's a good one. Telecon. Yeah. I, I can tell just by the designs. Yeah. Pleasure Principle. That's the one that got got me into him. So yeah, tell me about the melody writing. How's that come to you? Um. Well, the weird thing is when I sit down or when I figure out that I'm going to do a song. I'll kind of write vocals down or I'll write some lyrics down and I hear the entire um, arrangement in my head. So it's not hard for me to do a song at all. Um, so I'm just doing a cover of what I hear. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as like vocal arrangements are concerned, 
I don't know. It it just kind of pops up as a melody in my head, and um, so it's easy. I, I I blast through the recording stuff so fast. Like I'll I'll tell uh, I'll tell Zach Davis um, from Z Frequency. Uh, like I'll bounce an idea off him. I'm like, here I threw this together today, and it's like noon. And he's like, are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> He's like, it, it sounds good. All I would do is maybe, you know, put a put a low pass on this or whatever, and and uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, all right, hold on one sec, and then I'll swap it real quick and send it back to him, and and I'll be finished by like one in the afternoon, from starting at like eight in the morning. So um, so I'm not figuring out things to write when I get my gear out because I already know how the song is supposed to go. It's just a matter of trying to get the right tones yeah. that, that I hear or imagine. Mm -hmm. um, that's the best way I can describe it. But. Getting your sounds right. You, you spend a little time with your with your tones and your sounds, and you know, to shape your aesthetic. But let me see if I get this straight. You are coming at it, and you're just painting subjective subjective letting the song kind of flow out you're just kind of capturing all your ideas uh, you know not necessarily full stream of conscious but you're going with your first instincts on everything right pretty much yeah for the most part I would say first instincts is probably 90% eh, of it yeah yeah and then you shape it um, a little from there, but I but figure you're, you're, your if I try are... to deviate from that first instinct, yeah, um, I'm kind of losing what the song was originally about. I'm losing the first emotion that I had, mm -hmm. the one that that was actually the inspiration to make the song. So, yeah. Well, it's an example of it's an example of it being a good thing to be able to work quickly and get sounds and kind of know where everything's at and what you want real quickly so you can work that way and not lose your focus. You know, it's cool. It's a great example of that. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's, um, I've, I've just had experiences where I've sat down and gone through like, you know, 50 revisions of a song. And by the time that you hit the 50th one, well, I, I don't know. It just kind of lost its, um, it, it lost its raw edges. Yeah. And, you know, life is rough around the edges. It's not perfect. Yeah. So to make something that's relative to especially what drove me in the first place to do it is important. And if someone else can relate to that, that's good. You know, I, I, I can't really write songs from the perspective of, Hey, every, everything's peachy, you know. Let's have a party in the USA, or, or let's all let's all do this dance at this party you know, in the USA. Time. Shout out, Miley. <laughs> there we uh, go. You got it. <laughs> well, dude, like, I mean, I could totally relate to that process. I mean, it's not terribly different than most people's processes. I mean. You know, you just, you can't be too precious with your ideas and you want to get them out and you're, you're in subjective mode. And so that's the paintbrush. This is how I describe it. Subjective mode is the writing process. You've got your paintbrush and you're just painting everything and you're just painting what's in your mind, right? Eventually the paintbrush goes into the water and you have to turn into objective mode, which is the finish line mixing and get it ready for mastering and or mastering as well. So. Yeah. You don't want it to lose yeah, you any can't of go past its, that. Yeah, you don't want to lose the muse, but you still have to turn into objective guy eventually somewhere and you know what I mean? But yeah, I mean the process is awesome. <laughs> You're pretty efficient at it, so that's partly why uh, you can write that the way you can, you know. Thanks, man. It's it's the only way I can really do it. Um like I like I mentioned earlier, I don't have time to circle back to it. Um, you know, I'm single dadding four teenage boys 100% yeah. of the time. Yeah. So I've got to take advantage of everything I've got, like, right now. Because <laughs> I, can't, I can't say, oh, I'll work on it tomorrow, because who knows what's going to be happening tomorrow. And then that's going to push further out and further out. And I, 
I can't keep doing that because by the by the time that I've got time, um, I, I won't be in the same headspace. And uh, I think that's kind of what's most important to me is as far as putting something together is just being in the being in a focused headspace. Yeah, you're blessed and lucky to be able to even do what you can do uh, as well. You know, I, I'm, I'm really lucky. Yeah, I mean, really you lucky. know, we are, you know, as am I, to be able to have this craft that we love so much and are so passionate about. But the recurring themes through the album is great melody, great guitar tones, really cool drum and bass, Thanks. Really nice balanced static mixing, nothing too crazy, pretty straightforward. And, and what was cool is I'm wearing my uh, my shorts. So when I was playing the 30 seconds of the songs, I hadn't listened to your album on headphones yet. But I do, I hear the, the ear oh, candy. Okay. I can hear the cool electronic elements, the yeah. ear candy. And I can hear how good the guitar tones really are. You know what I mean? Oh, my goodness. I mean. Thank you. That you means a, a lot. Oh. On all the Especially coming from. Thanks, man. That it means a lot, especially coming from. I mean, you know your stuff just incredibly well. So that that means like so much to me, man. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Very welcome. And you know, I'm just learning you, like give me, all give me of us, me, like give the me, rest give me of me. us. You know, I'm learning <laughs> too. But uh, I think you you have an aesthetic in mind and you basically are achieving it so it's a win and uh you're you know the emotional content comes through so it's a win uh i'm excited for i listened to the ep as well just so you know i listened to the spring tank ep that predated this body oh, yeah. of work and i liked it as well i liked it that one that one was a little different. My intent was to not have any emotional attachment to any of those songs. So anything that you can try to think up that that song is about, I'm like, okay. Because I, no emotion drove it. It, it was really weird. <laughs> I well, just kinda your, wanted your to personality see kinda, still comes yeah. through. So, you know, whatever uh, your, your soul that you're harboring still comes through. The, the music no matter what I think sometimes it's dripping in emotion sometimes it's not but it's still there you know what I mean yeah 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 I get it it's that that was that was kind of a good experiment that that first uh, four song EP um, but I like how the guitars um, kind of evolved in that 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 EP was a really good exercise in evolving my guitar tone yeah, yep. I mean, you got the reps, and then when you went into the full length, you were ready to yeah. kill it. But, I mean, the EP is still very nice and experimental, avant-garde, and uh, it has the same yeah, elements you would expect. You know, if you do a deluxe, you could just tack those four on and call it a, uh, an LP deluxe, you know what I mean? So uh, they all fit yeah, I, just fine. I they all have fit. an Amazon. Yeah. I have go. an Amazon playlist that's, that's exactly that. It's the, it's the album and then those four songs right cool. after. Cool. They all so work. That's, that's, that's a nice the body of work. When were those written? Um, those were written between June and um, probably between June and September of About 23. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome continuation. Uh, to the new album. Thanks. Well, Thanks, yeah. Man. I mean, so the new album's coming out July 24th, is it? Yeah, July 24th for the, the Shiza Cats and stuff. So that's that's different than yeah, the Spring yeah. Tank stuff. Uh -huh. It's very so different. different. So the Shiza Cats and July 24th, a different project, but still our man Jeff Huso at the helm, of course. So it's still something that I'm excited for. And uh, I like the spring tank stuff too, but I'm excited to see where you, the direction of the uh, industrial elements that you go on on, on the Shiza Cats. And... I think you might dig it. Um, I think I will. I'm yeah. Sure, I will. <laughs> Just listening to the Apophis stuff, the Apophis. It's it's hot. <laughs> Um, but listening to, the, to, say, to that, the songs that you did, <laughs> listening yeah. to the songs that you did, it's uh -huh. um, 
it's not as um, like the the bedrock of of those songs that you did is very effective because it it sets that tone. Um, it kind of like sets a tone in your body that you're like, okay, this is, this is serious stuff I'm about to experience here. Yeah. Um, I don't quite have that in the Shiza Cats and stuff. Cause right. I was you trying kept to it lighter. The... You kept it light. Yes. Fluffy around the Yeah. I was trying to no keep the, the lighter goofy. Yeah. I was trying to keep it kind of light and goofy. Um, short songs like the, the punk rock aesthetic there. Okay. Um, just so you can blast through it and you're like, you're either like, okay, that was weird, or you're like, I need more of that. Mm-hmm. And that's um, usually the good, a good thing. Yeah, I got a guest vocalist in a couple. His name's Mike Lee, um, Phoenix local guy here. He's he's pretty well known. Okay, pretty well known cool. guy. It was wow. awesome to work with him on this. Um, he sent me a couple demos and and uh, so a couple of the songs off the upcoming album were pretty pretty uh like he was involved in those pretty heavily so okay cool awesome but i hope you like it man i really do yeah man um and let's do a album breakdown of that as well okay it's gonna be funny yeah and i'm glad <laughs> this one's about cats this one's about cats this yeah. one's about my stupid cats <laughs> yeah yeah whatever so. floats your boat there pal <laughs> And I'm glad that you liked the Apophis stuff, and I am. Yeah. I, was, I mixed all Saturday night. I updated like six of the eight mixes. There's two more coming down the pipe hole that I have to mix today and tomorrow night. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, be putting a date soon to it, so. Um, nice thank you probably i don't know august maybe i got some stuff coming up but i'm gonna try and get it out fast because then i gotta get back working on black star and the remixes but trevor is going to be mastering again for us shout out trevor noakes music ltd best mastering engineer around you should use them on your next project jeff and everyone else out there so well, thank you again, man. We can wrap it up, and then I'll, I'll, we'll talk for a second uh, off camera. Okay. But uh, good sure. job, awesome album, great work, great engineering. Uh, we're excited for the thank new you. one, the new drop, Shiza Cats on July 24th. And uh, yep. thanks for the sticker pack. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you get a chance, listen to listen to Freak Breed. They're really good. <laughs> thank you. Freak Breed Emerge is on all streaming platforms. Yes, we're like two almost two weeks in, so, yeah. It's been, I've gotten good feedback. Thank you for that. It's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. The video is up to like 250 plays, so that's not bad. Nice. Yeah, that video. we're going to do another video too for After the Storm. And it's going to okay. have band footage in it, so it'll be cool. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, a lot that's of stuff in the cool. works, buddy. Okay, I'm going to say sayonara and then hang on for a second. See you. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Cool. Thanks for having me, dude. Any you got time. it, buddy. Thanks, man. All Excellent right. work. Okay, we'll talk soon. All right. Later. Later.